Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, a country that was known more for its 26-year civil war than its pristine, sandy beaches. Colombo is very much at crossroads. Today, the freedom has brought a burst of energy and creativity. The most magnificent mix of colour and sounds and vitality that you don't find anywhere else. Since its civil war ended in 2009, Colombo has become the fastest growing city destination in the world. And a visit right now will reveal a place forging a new identity before your very eyes. I think now is the time if anyone really wants to come, that they should be coming to Colombo. And while the tourist guides may give a flavour of the city, nothing beats local knowledge. If you're here in Colombo, make sure you don't miss it. It's a great time to walk and have this kind of food. Three Colombans are taking you off the beaten track. See what they see and learn what they love about their remarkable city. My name is Sonali Dharmavardhana. I was born and bred in Colombo. I'm a fashion designer. I'm also an artist and I specialize in heritage art of batik. Batik is a form of wax resist that people um, over the years have used to value add to fabric. From this humble workshop, Sonali runs a top fashion label in Sri Lanka using centuries old techniques. You definitely won't find places like this in the travel brochures, but Colombo is a city that invites those who want to look behind the scenes. When you're in Colombo, it'll be rare that people will not allow you to come and take a look at things they're doing, whether it is cooking something in a, a, a restaurant, or if you come to my workshop and someone says, I like to see how batik is done, you can actually experience firsthand. There is an old world charm about it. And still, there's a little bit of village life right in the heart of the city. Here in Colombo, creative businesses like Sonali's are now uniquely accessible to any curious traveler. It's an opportunity that reflects a newfound freedom. I was very much a kid who grew up uh, during that time time of war. It was pretty much like being a caged animal. There was so little freedom with what we could do. However, today, freedom has brought a burst of energy and creativity in, in any, anything. You don't feel stifled. If you want to taste a bit of Colombo's creative surge, then there's no shortage of restaurants gaining international attention. Little by little, we are, we are showing, showcasing to the world what our cuisine is like. During the war, the old Dutch hospital in the heart of Colombo was used by the military. Now it's home to a restaurant that's been voted one of the best in Asia. Colombo is waking up. Uh, we are seeing so many influences of other countries coming in. Uh, and yeah, we, I think we get to showcase more of what we have. Darshan Munitasa is owner of the Ministry of Crab. He's also a celebrity chef, spearheading Colombo's culinary revolution, of which his restaurants are just a taste. The crab, it's a product of our country, and the Singaporeans have been taking it away from us for the last 40 years. I wanted to bring it back, and that's why the restaurant name was Ministry of Crab. He believes visitors to Colombo have to experience restaurants like this, where rich colonial history meets modern, world-class cuisine. The colonial history actually resulted in all this. This, this, was, this was a building built by the Dutch almost 350 years ago. And uh, Colombo has so many beautiful English architecture also, uh, buildings built by the British. And they're all getting used up as entertainment uh, industry for, for restaurants, for shopping. And I think we are creating something that's unique to South Asia. 
You don't see this happening in, uh, say, Singapore or in Dubai because they, don't, they would not have buildings this old. And uh, I think it's a celebration of our colonial past. Colombo was recently ranked the fastest growing city destination in the world. Yet some of the city's best experiences are in places run by locals for locals. When you come to Sri Lanka, there is one thing you must do, you must go to Petta Market to take in the sights and sounds and smells of Colombo. Gabby White is an Australian expat who's been living and working in Colombo for 21 years. She believes there's only one way to tour this sprawling shopping district, in the back of a tuk-tuk. If you're the wealthiest Sri Lankan or the poorest Sri Lankan, everyone ends up in Petta Market. This market will give you a window into the life of Columbans like no other. But for Gabby, it's the spices that give Petta its unique flavour. You find when you go to different people's houses, they always have a different spice mix. And, uh, you know, it, some people prefer more cardamom, some people prefer more chilli powder, some people prefer more cloves in their, their food. So this is where shops like this that exist is really fantastic because people have had their spice traditions passed down from their grandmothers, their great-grandmothers. You know, here you get to, to actually look and feel and touch and smell, you know, and the smell is amazing. You can find just about anything in Petta Market. Be prepared to negotiate a price and always do it with a smile. Sri Lankans do everything with a smile and I think it helps if you also do everything with a smile and you'll always be looked after. It's lunchtime at the Ministry of Crabs. What's this? Steam crab. Steam crab for now, yeah. And Darshan's having a catch-up with his partner in the restaurant, Kumar Sangakara. It's been a good experience opening this place up and seeing, uh, you know, Sri Lankans really embrace it. It's a risk as well. You don't know whether people will like this, but the last three years have proved that people are really ready. Kumar knows as well as anyone that food isn't the only thing that unites people in this country. He's one of Sri Lanka's all-time greatest cricketers. Whether you know the rules of cricket or not, if you want to understand Colombo, you need to experience this national obsession. And you don't need to get tickets to the big stadiums here to enjoy the sport. Cricket is the absolute quintessential essence of Colombo. You know, it doesn't matter where you travel throughout Colombo, there is always a match going on in some little nook or cranny, some little backyard, some back street. Gabby and her husband run the Cricket Club Cafe, a well-known restaurant and bar in Colombo, and she'll often find impromptu games happening right outside the front door and anyone's welcome to take part. If you turn up to watch a match or just, you know, observe it from the side of the road, you quite often get Sri Lankans calling you over to, for you to come and join in. They would love nothing than to be showing off their skills and to get foreigners involved to show them how good they are at cricket. They can never stop talking about it, really. Recreational time is less about sport for Sonali and more about picnics with friends on Colombo's sandy beaches. Tourists might hit the sand during the day, but locals go when the beaches are really at their best, after work. In the evening, by the beach, watching the sunset. You need to see this, the, the nuances of colour as the sun sets and, and the waters change from its incredibly blue of the day to a, a, a new colour palette by evening. And it's so amazing. Mount Lavinia Beach is her favourite. Three miles of golden sands, just a stone's throw from the city centre. Because we're an island nation, we're surrounded by waters. The beaches are amazing. Mount Lavinia is a well-known hangout, but for Sonali, 
it's best to be enjoyed with a takeaway hamper. This is actually very authentic Sri Lankan food. And you can buy it on the streets on, on banana leaves. That's how they, they pack it. So it's available everywhere. And it's easy, fresh food, so it's good to eat. Being on the west coast of the island, Colombo isn't short of special spots to watch the sunset. But for Sonali, it doesn't get any better than here on the beach. A few miles up the coast, in the historic heart of the city, is Gallface Green. I come here sometimes because my restaurants are 100 meters this way, 100 meters that way, it's to walk between them for the sunset and for inspiration. Darshan may not have far to walk, but people come here from all over the city after sunset. He's not alone in thinking it's the very best place to experience Colombo at night. You get food vendors, kites being flown, and I think it's something charming about old time uh, pastimes, that uh, something simple as a kite is still flown out there. And the food are uh, influenced by the uh, different ethnic groups of this country. If you're here in Colombo, make sure you don't miss it. It's a great time to walk and have this kind of food. Everyone walks through this place to see the old hotel, Gold Face Hotel, afternoon tea at the hotel, come over here, sunset. This grand promenade was established by the British in the 19th century. Today, it's the unique atmosphere that Darshan's particularly keen to share. It's, it's ambiance too. I mean, you don't get anywhere where the Indian Ocean is like 10 feet away from you. Uh, there's saltiness in the air, the wind's in your hair. It's, it's an amazing place to come. While Colombians are proud of their history and culture, there's an emerging night scene in Colombo you might not expect. I feel a little sad that people look at us as a third world country. And when you say you're from Sri Lanka, sometimes people don't know where you're from. And they have a perception that we are still an uncivilized nation. Colombo is very much a crossroads between a Western culture and the traditional part of it. Sonali is showcasing her latest designs at Colombo Fashion Week. But tonight is as much about fun as fashion. Colombo is much of a, a social life. There is anything you'll get in any other part of the world. And um, I think it's important for people to come and experience that. So you'll have a little bit of that old fashioned, old world charm, and then there'll be this buzzing, very international, multicultural flavor that gives it a, a happy balance. We're just given birth to peace, as it were. It's a fresh time. I think now is the time if anyone really wants to come, that they should be coming to Colombo. Tonight's show has been a huge success, but for Colombo, the party's just getting started.